Hey guys, YouTube World 100 here. I'm continuing King of the Ring month with my King of the Ring reviews. Here's my review of King of the Ring 1998. So, yeah, this was a. Yeah, this was a good show right here, yeah. It's mostly due to the last three matches that this show ended up being a good show. Yeah. Some people have said, like, this is, like, one of the greatest pay views of the Attitude Era. I wouldn't go that far to say that. Yeah, it's, this really is not one of the greatest shows of the Attitude Era. Yeah, because, yeah. Basically, like, everything else before the last three matches, it's really kind of mediocre, really. I mean, there are, you did have a couple of, kind of, entertaining matches before the last three. But, overall, it really was not, like, a great show. Yeah, it was pretty mediocre, to be honest. Yeah, but like I said, yeah, this show turned out being good, but mostly because of the last three matches, yeah. So, yeah, let me just get right in this thing. Show kicked off with a six-man tag match. It was the Headbangers and Takamichi Noku versus Kai and Tai, which was Funaki, Kyo, and Dick Togo. Uh, this was a decent match right here, yeah. Yeah. It was, like, back and forth between the two teams, yeah. Kai and Tai were trying to gang up on all... On all six guys... Yeah, on all the headbangers and Takamichi no Ku, yeah. And... Yeah, at one point, Takamichi no Ku attacked in both headbangers at the same time, and yeah, we were kind of confused on who was actually legal in the match, yeah. And the referee, like, turned out picking Thrasher as the legal guy. And then in the end, Takamichi no Ku and the headbangers won when Takamichi no Ku pinned Funaki. So, yeah, it was a decent opener, I'd say. I'd give it about a uh, two and three quarter. Yeah, and this, yeah, this was also the very first King of the Ring, well, and the only King of the Ring pay-per-view to not have the King of the Ring tournament match open up the show, yeah. Yeah, just, yeah, just a fact right there, yeah. And then we got the two King of the Ring semi-final matches. First up had Ken Shamrock versus Jeff Jarrett. Uh, this was okay, yeah. In this match, Jeff Jarrett was targeting Ken Shamrock's knee and ankle because him and Tennessee Williams, like, injured his knee and ankle or something. Yeah. There were times when Jeff Jarrett was attracting the referee and Tennessee Williams attacked Ken Shamrock, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, Ken Shamrock was, like, beating Jeff Jarrett down for, like, the majority of this match, yeah. And then, yeah, in the end, Ken Shamrock won after he got Jeff Jarrett to tap out to the ankle lock, yeah. And then afterwards, yeah, Ken Shamrock attacked both Jeff Jarrett and Tennessee. Oh, wait. Hang on, did I say Tennessee Williams earlier? Yeah, his name's Tennessee Lee, I'm sorry. Yeah, Tennessee Lee. Yeah, not Tennessee Williams, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Ken Shamrock attacked Jeff Jarrett and Tennessee Lee after the match, yeah. So, yeah, it was a, it was an okay match, I give it a two and a half stars. And then The Rock versus Dan Severn in the other semifinal match. This match was absolutely horrible, alright? Dan Severn just sucked as a wrestler, yeah, I mean, he was, he's a great MMA fighter, but he's not a good wrestler at all, I mean, he was just horrible, I mean, his moves in this match all looked absolutely terrible and just, like, crap right here, yeah. This was one of The Rock's worst matches of his career, yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah, at the end, The Nation distracted the referee, and then D'Lo Brown had a splash on Dan Seven with some... Yeah, he was wearing, like, something over his chest, and yeah, he splashed onto Dan Seven with that. And that allowed The Rock to get the pin. Yeah, it was an absolutely horrible match. I give it half a star. And then next up was Too Much versus Al Snow and Head. Yeah. And yeah, Jerry Lawler was named special referee at the last minute for this match. 
this really was not very good either. I mean, seriously, I mean, they tried to make it like an actual tag match with Head as Al Snow's partner. Oh man, this is just like Backlash 2006 where it was Vincent Shane versus Shawn Michaels and God. Yeah, it was, it was a pretty stupid match, yeah. Yeah, Jerry Lawler was trying to help too much against Al Snow and Head, yeah. Too much was Brian Christopher and Scott Taylor. Or, yeah. 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 Too much was just like toying around with Al Snow, <laughs> trying to give him a chance to tag in Head, but yeah, they just stopped it. And then, yeah. Al Snow eventually did get a tag on Head, and yeah. He was. Al Snow nailed Brian Christopher and Scott Taylor with Head, yeah. And it was just an absolutely stupid ending. And like, Al Snow covered. Scott Taylor, but apparently Head was the legal one in the match. And yeah, Brian Christopher pinned Head. Huh. Yeah, so too much won the match. Yeah, it was just stupid. Uh, a star and a half. <laughs> I'm even be generous with that, to be honest. Yeah. And then next up was X Pot versus Owen Hart. Hmm. This was a decent match right here, yeah. Yeah. Owen Hart or attacked X Pac on like the outside of the ring and like he nailed him into the steel barricade and on the announce table, yeah. Yeah and yeah, it was just kind of a back and forth match. It was alright, yeah. Yeah. And then at one point, as X-Pac was on the outside of the ring, Mark Henry came out and he attacked Mark, he attacked Owen Hart. Yeah. And then, like, China went up to Mark Henry's face and then Vader came out and attacked Mark Henry, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, as the referee was, like, distracted with them, and, like, Owen Hart had X-Pac in a sharpshooter and X-Pac was actually happening, but then China... And I came into the ring and gave X, uh, Owen Hart a DDT. And then that allowed X Pac to pin Owen Hart and get the win. So, yeah, it was a decent match, I'd say. I give it a two and a half stars. Then next up had the Tag Team Championship match. The New Age Outlaws defending against the New Midnight Express, Bombastic Bob, or Bob Holly, and Bodacious Bart, Bart Gunn. Yeah, these two. Yeah, and the New Midnight Express were actually the NWA Tag Champions at the time. Mm. And, uh, this was, uh, another decent match. Yeah. They actually did acknowledge that Billy and Bart were brothers, and, yeah. They were going at it, and, yeah. All four guys were just in the match together, yeah. One point, like, Jim Cornette tried to help Newman Express by hitting, I think it was Billy Gunn in the back with one of the NWA tag title belts, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah, I think it was Bob, Bodacious, uh, no, not Bodacious, Bombastic Bob went, got a cover on Billy Gunn, but he survived it, yeah. And Jim Cornette was going to attack him again, but then China came in and gave... Jim Cornette a low blow, you know? And then, at the end, the New Age Outlaws hit a hot shot on, I think it was Bombastic Bob. Yeah, and then they got the win. So, yeah, it was a, it was a decent match. I give it a, about two and three quarter. And then we had the King of the Ring final, The Rock versus Ken Shamrock. Yeah, this was a good match right here. This was a Real good match right here, yeah. Had Triple H on commentary with JR and King for the match, and yeah, China was actually on commentary with the Spanish announcers. There's, yeah. And yeah, this was a good back and forth match, yeah. Both Rock and Ken Shamrock, like, uh, both got mm, a fair share of offense in here, yeah. I'd say this is probably the best match that they've had, had with each other, the ones I've seen, yeah. Like I said, WrestleMania 14 was really not that great. 
Survivor Series was meh, and Royal Rumble 1998, uh, it was a good match, but yeah, I'd say this one was probably their best match right here. Yeah, at one point The Rock was like, outside of the ring, like, getting in Triple H's face. Easy up. And then, yeah, Triple H didn't spit water on The Rock's face, and then The Rock shoved Triple H, and then, yeah, Ken Shamrock got Rock from behind. Yeah. And, yeah, I just kind of went back and forth. Not really anything that really memorable happened during this match, but, yeah, it was still good. Yeah. And then, yeah, Rock hit, I think, was it a hot shot? Yeah, Rock hit some kind of move. Forgot what, exactly what it was on to Ken Shamrock, but Ken Shamrock survived it. Yeah, and then, yeah, that was the Rock. And then Ken Shamrock out of nowhere got an ankle lock on the Rock, and then the Rock eventually tapped out, and Ken Shamrock won. Ken Shamrock became King of the Ring. And I have to admit, this is one King of the Ring victory that I really did not like. And it's not like I have anything against Ken Shamrock, because I don't. But, I mean, seriously, what happened with Ken Shamrock ever here? I mean, he wasn't, like, made into any kind of star, like... Stone Cold and Triple H were when they won King of the Ring, and even like when Bret Hart, he did make the argument that he was already a top star when he won King of the Ring, but yeah, this showed that he was, he would remain a top star, yeah, didn't really do anything like that for him, and he, even like with Owen Hart, like, when he won King of the Ring, he went to SummerSlam to face Bret Hart for the title, and that same thing happened with Mabel in 1995, he went to SummerSlam to face Diesel for the title. But what happened with Ken Shamrock here? I mean, nothing. He got no world title shot at all. He was, he wasn't really made into like a top star. And so yeah, I mean, yeah, it was just what was the point of having Ken Shamrock win King of the Ring here? I mean, it would have actually made sense for The Rock to win the King of the Ring here. I would have rather had The Rock win this because yeah, he was actually made into a top star. And 1998 was like one of The Rock's best years. I mean, he was Intercontinental Champion for like nine months. Months, yeah. And he had the he had the great ladder match with Triple H at SummerSlam, and at Survivor Series he won the title. Title. I mean, this would have been great for him to win King of the Ring this year. And yeah, winning King of the Ring was like the one thing The Rock did not do in his career. And yeah, I really felt like he should have won here because I mean, The Rock was actually made into a top star, or shortly after this. And yeah, it just really would have made much more sense to have The Rock win this than Ken Shamrock. So yeah. I really was not a fan of Ken Shamrock winning this King of the Ring tournament at all. But yeah, I'm not going to let that affect how I felt about the match. Yeah, it was still a really good match. I give it three and a half stars. And then we have the Hell in a Cell match. The Undertaker vs. Mankind. This was a freaking awesome, awesome match right here. Yeah, I said before that this is my pick for the greatest Hell in a Cell of all time. And I still stick with that. I still say this is my pick for the greatest Hell in a Cell match of all time. Yeah, this was just great, great stuff right here. Yeah, had the, of course, the two falls from the cell, yeah, and neither one of them was even supposed to happen, yeah. First one when Undertaker threw Mankind off of the cell through the announce table, yeah, it wasn't even supposed to happen, but Mankind told Undertaker to throw him off the cell, and he did, and yeah, Mankind just went flying off of the cell through the announce table, yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah, a bunch of, like, officials came out, yeah, had referees and, like, Terry Funk and Vince McMahon out there. Yeah, they brought out a stretcher, they were starting to stretcher Mankind away. But then, <laughs> Mankind came back, and yeah, they were fighting on top of the cell again, and then Undertaker chokeslammed Mankind through the cell, and yeah, that wasn't supposed to happen either. Yeah, Undertaker was just supposed to chokeslam Mankind on a steel chair on top of the cell, but yeah, broke the cell, Mankind just fell right through it down to the canvas and yeah <laughs> great stuff right here had use of the chair use of the cell the thumbtacks I mean there's, this was an awesome match right here yeah yeah mankind putting out thumbtacks throwing thumbtacks down onto the canvas yeah trying to throw Undertaker on them but yeah Undertaker was able to fight it off and yeah and yeah then mankind had the mandible claw on Undertaker and then Undertaker backdrop Mankind right onto the thumbtacks. But seriously, Mankind's an idiot. He was actually rolling in those thumbtacks afterwards. Yeah. 
Yeah, and then, yeah, Undertaker choke slamming Mankind onto the thumbtack, and yeah, Undertaker getting the tombstone on Mankind, and Undertaker gets the win. Yeah, awesome, great match right there, yeah. Five star Hell in a Cell match, yeah. I give that five stars. Great match. And then we had the main event, first blood match for the WWF Championship, Stone Cold defending against Kane. And Kane was saying that if he lost this match, he'd set himself on fire, and yeah, you had, like, some tanks of gasoline out there. Yeah. And yeah, this was, yeah, this was another really good match right here, yeah. Some people, I heard, they say they really didn't, didn't like this match or didn't care for it because of how unfair it was, since, like, Kane was basically, like, covered completely. He really wasn't a able to bleed, but yeah, that was kind of... That was really kind of the point of this, because, yeah, this was, of course, like, during the Stone Cold Vince McMahon feud. Vince McMahon basically was just wanting Stone Cold to lose the title. This was the same reason why he had the triple threat match at Breakdown that year with Undertaker, Stone Cold, and Kane, where Undertaker and Kane couldn't pin each other. They had to pin Stone Cold because he just wanted Stone Cold to lose the title. And, yeah, that was the case here, too. So, yeah. So, yeah, so... Yeah, that thing with, like, Kane really not being able to bleed really didn't bother me. Yeah. And yeah, I had Vince McMahon and Sable watching from a skybox high above the ring, yeah. Yeah, it was a good match right here, yeah. Yeah, some, it was just really good stuff right here, yeah. Had, a, once again, a lot of weapon use, yeah, and the Hell in a Cell was being lowered down again throughout this match. It was, like, being lowered and raised throughout the match, yeah. First it was being lowered, yes. Kane was trying to get it to, like lower down on Stone Cold's throat, yeah, and then as Kane was like trapped in the, stuck on the doorway or something, yeah, it was starting to be raised, yeah, and yeah, they were like brawling through the out, on the outside of the ring, up the rampway, yeah, Kane at one point was trying to hit Stone Cold with a piece of a guardrail, but yeah, Stone Cold like was able to like sort of block it with his hand, but like kind of fell down on him, yeah. And yeah, it was just, yeah, it, it was a good match here, yeah. And then, yeah, at the end had Mankind coming out, out with a chair trying to help Kane, but Stone Cold took him out. And then, yeah, had Undertaker then coming out with a chair. He was trying to hit Mankind with it. Or was it Kane? Yeah, it was one of them. Forgot exactly who, yeah. And yeah, he moved out of the way, and then Undertaker, like, accidentally hit Stone Cold with a chair, and that ended up busting Stone Cold open, but the referee was unconscious right there, yeah. And then Undertaker then brought the referee into the ring and he poured gasoline on him, I guess. He had to revive him some way. And then Kane hit Undertaker with a... was a chair, I think it was, yeah. And then, yeah, like, Stone Cold, like, he either hit under... he hit Kane with the chair again or gave him the sign, yeah. And then, yeah, the referee then regained consciousness and saw Stone Cold bleeding and called for the bell. And Kane became the new champion. Yeah, so Kane was WWF champion, yeah. Only to have Stone Cold win the title back the very next night. So, yeah, there was that. So, yeah, I didn't really understand what the point was of giving Kane the title for one day. I mean, they could have, like, had Kane hold the title until the next pay per view where Stone Cold won it back, instead of having to. having Stone Cold win it back from Kane the very next night. So, yeah. But, yeah, it was still a really good match. I give it three and three quarter. Yeah. So overall, the show, I give it a 7.5 out of 10. Yeah, like I said, mostly due to the last three matches. Rock Ken, and Ken Shamrock, Undertaker, Mankind, and Stone Cold and Kane in the first one match. Yeah, especially Undertaker, Mankind. Great home style right there, yeah. Yeah, and like I said, the rest of the show, pretty mediocre, with some some enjoyable matches on there. Yeah, but yeah, like I said, last three matches really make the show as good as it is. So yeah, alright. So that does it for my review of King of the Ring 1998. Hope you guys enjoyed. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.